your presence. Now, you have been with us all through since the beginning of the week till today. We want to thank you, God, because as we continue with this issue of angelic beings and uh, the spiritual warfare, it's a very tough subject for both of us. But we thank God because he is giving us divine revelation. And today we are going to see whether the situation we are today are similar with those which were there during the time of Noah. And uh, the word that is leading us is as in the time or in the day of Noah. And we are going to start with a word of prayer from our brother. Oh God, uh, our Father, through Jesus Christ once again, this wonderful morning we approach you from Thank you because of the gift of life. Thank you because of what you're doing, what you're teaching and teaching us. Our God, we continue submitting ourselves unto you, that you may continue leading us, Father, for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray trusting and believing. Amen. As we continue today, uh, we are looking at the similarities of the sins that made God angry during the time of Noah. And we are want to see, are we committing the same issues as those days? Let us see what Jesus says in the book of Luke, as our sister reads the scripture for us. So Luke 17, verse 26, uh, 26 to verse 29. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. Just to add on that, in the book of Genesis 11, it says, as in the days of Noah, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Mm -hmm. So we see as the normal life, that, like the scripture that you have read, mm -hmm. life was taking a normal turn. Mm -hmm. Nobody saw as if there was something unusual. Mm -hmm. It was life as usual. People were eating, making merry, and they were seeing life to be normal. Mm -hmm. But God was seeing a different. He is saying there were corruption and even violence. Are we seeing the same situation today? The same case and the same things that happened in those days. Actually, we can actually even say it is on a heightened level. Mm -hmm. It has even escalated. Uh, the things that happened in those days, they are also manifested now. The manner of evil, uh, sexual perversion, um, greed, um, the, the things that people have, the activities that people have engaged in these days. It, it, even, even though it is not what was happening those days, but there is similarity. So we can also say that the spirit that used to dominate them, it is also dominating even now. Because the word of God says that it is, I, I, this is what I want to believe. It is under the influence of the fallen angels together with Satan that caused all those things to happen in the earlier days. And these forces after the flood came, these forces never went away. They are still here with us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And maybe even as you talk about that, I'm thinking about the many aspects of corruption and violence that are going through. Look back for the last uh, couple of months of what has gone around yeah. the world. Things that are, are coming up that I have never heard of destruction of cities. I think it was the other, the other day when we had about the explosions in Lebanon. Yeah. Hearing about the deaths of thousands and thousands and millions of people because of COVID-19. All this uh, corruption in, in, in we are hearing about funds that are being directed to things you cannot even imagine happening. Yet, as the Bible says, they were still eating, drinking, marrying and giving it marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Mm -hmm. Moral corruption, continuous and escalating violence as you are saying. These are things that are, we are seeing manifested every day in our lives today. And I'm sure there is something for us to learn from that. Actually as we continue we are also told that uh, especially this time 
that uh, people are continuing to do things that were done. That if you read in the scripture in First Peter two, the Peter was telling the newborn Christian, "Read yourself of greed, greed mm -hmm. malice, mm -hmm. envy, slander, mm -hmm. and things of those kinds." Mm -hmm. Now that you have known God, mm -hmm. right now we claim to know Christ more, but we are getting deeper in those things. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we are talking about angelic beings coming from heaven, I, are we right now, if we ask ourselves, are those things still happening? For now it might seem as if the angelic beings are no longer present. But even as soon as uh, last month, the U.S. Uh, government task, uh, made a task force or a branch of its military mm -hmm. to spy on things it has been seen coming from heaven. Mm -hmm. Things that have higher speed than ever a man can make. Mm -hmm. Their satellites are trying to follow them, but they can't even focus. Their largest and the, the most fast jets that are faster than the sound of the uh, sound of the, they are faster than the, the speed of sound. Mm -hmm can't even come close to them, but there are things that are sighted there. Mm. And it has tasked a military branch, actually has created, because they are picked by satellite, mm. but they can't be able to get unto them. And sometimes we know the speed of an angel, it's like a flash. Mm. One minute is there, one minute is in heaven. Mm. So we can say those are examples. We might not concretely say this is an angel, mm. but it shows that they are higher beings mm. or beings with more intelligence than us mm. that are out there. Yeah, that calls then to the theory or from what I'm hearing from you. Uh, it's calling for us to to ask for a spirit of discernment. Yes. That God to help us to design the times we are living in. So that as we are living in these days, because God has called us knowing that these days are there, yes. that even as we are living in these days, that we are able to know this is the way that the Lord expects us to live. And we live in it. You know, I like what we completed the other day. That even in the midst of all, there was a man called Lot. Yes. Who was spared. Actually, if you read uh, the, that scripture on about Noah, the last part of that, it's even a one sentence. It says, and Noah was spared. Yes. And Lot was spared. Yeah. That God gives us a spirit of our designers so that he may be able to spare our lives yeah. in the midst of this corruption and violence that is escalating every day. But the funny thing is that uh, in the midst of this, mm -hmm. church seems to be left behind. When things are happening, even in terms of COVID, church was put out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an essential service. Mm -hmm. In those days of earlier, when there was a calamity in any nation, in the land, the first people who were consulted were high priests. Mm -hmm. Why is that happening? I think it's because we have lost that hierarchy of authority. Mm -hmm. When we prosper in gospel, we worship ourselves. Mm -hmm. We become, and we don't uh, fear the authority. We don't follow the hierarchy that God gave us. And there is that hierarchy well defined, mm -hmm. where authority comes from. There are examples that are being given, like in what Paul says in First Corinthians. Our brother, you can read it for us. Maybe just before he reads that scripture, as he looks for that scripture, I'm also asking myself, could we be falling victim of not wanting to listen to the men of God who are able to tell us what God has to say for us. Because we could be falling victims. Because I'm imagining in the days of Noah, Noah sounded. Noah must have sounded the alarm. Mm. But they were not listening. Yes. Even as he was taking the animals and they were walking in and the, 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 the people that walked into the Noah, into the ark. Remember when he was building the ark? Actually, that He period. was building an ark in a period of history when there was so much drought. And everybody kept on asking, what's wrong with this guy? This man must be crazy. Mm -hmm. How can he build such... And imagine how big the, the ark was. 
And as was busy building the ark and telling people, hey guys, floods are coming. Floods are coming. Let us, let us turn back. Let us get in. There is no rain coming. Could we be falling under the same uh, category today? Refusing to hear what the voice of God is saying. And that's why you can see the church is being kept aside. Mm -hmm. Yes? Matters uh, 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 church, let them be kept aside. We can deal with this thing on our own. And in the end, we are having so many people perishing. Mm -hmm. Could this also be that we need to also ask ourselves, are we listening to the people that we have been given, the knowers of our time, mm -hmm. who are sounding the warning, who are able to design and speak what, what the Spirit of God is speaking to us in our times? So that you may not perish. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I thank him because of last thing. Because I remembered a movie I watched called Evans Almighty. Mm -hmm. uh, he he was in the in the he's casted as a news anchor. Mm -hmm. But then he has this encounter with God. Mm -hmm. and God tells him, I want you to build me an ark. Like Noah. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he started doing building the ark and then people were making jokes over him because of him building an ark, mm -hmm. saying there is a flood that is coming. So what you're saying is true. Mm -hmm. So we can even be not uh, responding to what you're being told by the ones that are being sent by God. Mm -hmm. um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2 to 5. I praise you for remembering me in everything and for holding to the teachings, just as I pass them on to you. Now I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head, and every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. It is just as though her head were ashamed. If a woman does not cover her head, she should have her hair cut off, and if it is a, dis and it is a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut off or shaved off, we should cover our head. We should cover our head. Yeah, as the scriptures have told us, you hear there is a clear cut authority. Mm -hmm. The head of a man is Christ. Then after that, so it's Christ, man, and woman. Mm -hmm. And there is a way that we have been given to when we are approaching God. And this brings in question the issue of dressing, even in church. Um, let me go straight to our sister. What do you think about dressing? I think it's a big, uh, it's a big question, and a question that has had a lot of controversy over time. But even as you were saying that, I was thinking, uh, let's imagine uh, the head of state was visiting our church. Yes. And uh, before he comes to church, there are all these protocols that we have to observe. We have to make sure the place is clean. Even the pavements that we don't scrub, we scrub them, we remove dust, we make sure everywhere is, is ready. The presidential team will be here to sniff and find that the place is safe for him to be there. We shall make sure that everything is ready. After Kuva Uneno Natafuta Komzuri, nobody comes and dressed before the head of state uh, in, in, their, in their farm clothes or in their sleeping clothes. We come dressed knowing that you're coming to meet the head of state in the nation. Imagine who we come to meet when we come to church. We are meeting the King of Kings. And in our pres as we come to the presence of God to meet the King of Kings, how much more do we need to be prepared in the way we dress? So I, I think that the, the idea of bringing in the debate about dressing, for me there is no debate here. Because I am coming to meet the King of Kings. And I should be appropriately dressed knowing that I am meeting the Almighty God, who is even above the head of state of this country. So I think when it comes to dressing, the Bible is very clear and we, with the, about the authority and the nature in which we come before God. And it is important for us to follow that even when we come before God. As we conclude, we want to say authority is very important mm -hmm. and presenting ourselves to authority, how we present ourselves. Mm. We should not compromise the integrity of coming to the place of worship, mm. to the king of kings, mm. if we can present ourselves better to people who we can see and 
holding high esteem like our father. Mm -hmm. If we can't go to our father dressed in a certain manner, mm -hmm. definitely we should not also come to the king of kings just because we don't see him physically dressed in that manner. Mm -hmm. So the issue of authority, if we follow the hierarchy of authority, let Christ be above us, then let us abide by the authority that he has given us and everything will work for the better of them who trust in the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.